Greetings, people who really like this, the accordion. This is difficult to say, to explain, but I'm going to try my best. This might be the weirdest, deepest, weirdest thing that I've done so far, but I'm going to give it a shot. In my previous video, I said, what on God's earth does the Mississippi meld? In other words, the concept of idiomatic alternation of tones that gives us a blues what does that have to do with Paul McCartney? And I say it has a lot to do with Paul McCartney, being the musical genius that he is. So I say, can we find any of Joey's ideas, concepts, in mainstream music? Does it happen? Do his concepts ever show up in mainstream music at all? And I say, well, let's look. Let's look at it something uh, that's popular, that's been around for years, and it's been right in front of our faces. It's a song by Paul McCartney called Maybe I'm Amazed. Paul McCartney, all right, written in 1969, released in 70, and more specifically, April 17, 1970. And this is a critical time for McCartney and a critical time for the Beatles. All right, so we show you that. We say... Are they there? Are those concepts there? So we look and we want to know uh, the circle of fifths. Does it play a part in this? All right. The minor third interval. Does it play a part in McCartney's music? In, in his song, Maybe I'm Amazed. What about Joey's uh, concept of subject, aggregating chord scale relationship? Do any of these things, any of these goofy ideas play a part play a role in McCartney's music, ever, even if just once. So we have the circle of fists, which I talked about over and over, all right? And here's your handy chart. Now, first thing we notice, the first thing we notice in the song, Maybe I'm Amazed, here's the basic chords for the verse, all right? This is for the verse. <coughs> Excuse me. I say, here's your chords for your verse. You don't need to study this right now. We're going to get into it, but... The point is, if you look at this, okay, you scan it, you notice something right away. You notice that he uses chords that range from, and this is beautiful, from A flat all the way around to A. He uses all these chords, and they're in order. They're consecutive, not, not played consecutive, but they, they stand and they, they appear consecutively on the circle of fists. All right, that's how they're arranged. So basically, he uses these, these chords. And that's a beautiful thing. You say, well, that's coincidence. Okay, I'll give you that. You say, that's coincidence. <clears throat> it can't be a factor in this discussion. Well, <coughs> what he does is, and McCartney does this, and maybe I'm amazed, for example, whether we like it or not, the tonal center is D. You say, well, I don't hear it, and, you know, that's far-fetched. No, no, the tonal center is D, all right? Now, I think McCartney writes almost always intuitively. I don't think he's even consciously aware of everything that he does, because he does so much brilliantly. He does so much. It's just totally profound. So I don't think he's aware consciously of these things that we're about to discuss. And if he is, I apologize, because remember, I'm a nobody. I'm uneducated. And uh, I'm, I'm just going by my own intuition, okay? Now, when McCartney does key changes or chord changes, all right, when he has chord movement, you think that there's these, these key changes and you think they're um, specific or intentional or whatever. But the point is, <clears throat> I, I think, in my mind, I think McCartney's key changes and chord changes are quasi-key changes, or you could say errant in other words, in other words, uh, errant meaning straying outside the proper or customary path or bounds. In other words, errant. They just kind of wander off, but but the effect is beautiful, and it works. And he's a master at that. I so I say he's a master at the errant key change or chord movement. So keep that in mind now as we enter into discussion about Paul McCartney and whether or not my concepts and ideas show up in any of his songs. All right, keep that in mind. Now, another thing that he is 
<clears throat> very good at is holding off on resolution. In other words, in this song, with the D tonal center, you expect at some point for the, the, the music, the lines of music, the chords, the flow to resolve to D. You're waiting for it. But <clears throat> it doesn't really happen. Now let's jump to our main chart with the, the verse chords. So what do we get first of all? Okay, in our first few measures here, what do we get? B flat, F, C, G. All right, let me just play this a little bit. I don't play well, but I have to show you this. Etc., etc., okay? So you saw what happened here. You saw immediately in our discussion, he's using the circle of fifths immediately. Immediately. He goes <clears throat> B flat, F, C, G, then B flat, F, C. He does that. I'm not making this up. This is an actual fact. Now let's proceed with the next few measures. Let's go down. We're still in the verse, all right? Let's just let's move it along if I can play this. I, I should practice, but I don't. So you have a little chord run here, and he does it on the piano. It's very important. Basically, what you're going to hear is a B flat, and then the F chord with an A bass. A flat major and an E flat major with a G bass. So you get a little, nice little run there. Again. And he resolves here to C, kind of a semi resolve. It keeps you in suspense. And this is the beauty of it. Okay, circle of fifths. That's this red line. Circle of fifths. Circle of fifths, circle of fifths. But what happens here from F to A flat? That is the minor third that we talked about in my previous videos, stressed and emphasized in the harmonic series. Tremendous emphasis put on this interval in the harmonic series. And McCartney always, maybe unconsciously, uses it. I talked about this in Penny Lane and his song Here, There, and Everywhere in my previous videos. So he's circle of fifths, circle of fifths, circle of fifths, circle of fifths again, and then the critical, beautiful minor third, the jump, <clears throat> A flat, circle of fifths again, and he, look at this. This is just incredible. E flat to C, uh, minor third, minor third, and he ends up on C, and he's still not giving us resolution. He's still not giving us resolution. All right? So what has happened so far? Am I proving my point? Are my concepts, my ideas, my perspective, is it in at least one popular rock song or one McCartney song? Well, he's doing the circle of fifths. All right, he's doing the circle of fifths repeatedly. And he's not given us resolution. All right, he's done that. He has given us... Now remember, I, here is my list, another little checklist, circle of fifths. Is he giving us a minor third? Is the minor third playing a role, a critical role? <clears throat> Sound quality wise, as far as grabbing the listener and holding the listener, you, you can't get any better than this. He does it in Penny Lane. He does this, minor third, F to A flat. And then here again, from E flat to C. Right here, when you get that little jolt, that, that, that oh my God, that's beautiful, he gives you a break here, and he gives it to you again. It's, to me, it's truly, it's, it's masterful. It's masterful writing. And you say, well, that's coincidence. That's just coincidence. No, I say not. The tonal center is D, whether we like it or not. And what does he do? What about my system? What about Joey's invention, the aggregating minor? D? And here's the aggregating major, okay, and this is the aggregating minor of D. 
And here's your relative binder of D. We already talked about that, but look, A flat. You say, why on God's earth is there an A flat in this song? Well, here it is. And it's, the A flat is approached. It is approached through the, through the jump of the minor third. It's just too beautiful. It's just too sweet. This, this can't be coincidence. So you see already in this song three of my concepts. My, the way I look at stuff are in the song. Circle of fifths, clearly. Minor third interval placed perfectly in perfect position to get the maximum effect. And he uses the aggregating major. He has your tonal center and he uses the A-flat aggregating major. He uses these three things. And that's, that's not even the end of it. That's not even the end of it. He starts with the tonal center of D. And, and do we get resolution? When do we get resolution? Not in the first few measures. Circle of fifths. He doesn't resolve to D. Watch this. <laughs> There's no D next. Then he goes back. No D. There's no D resolution there in that first part of the verse. Then later on, in the chorus, from G to this D major, with the augmented 9 thrown in, does he resolve to the D? All right, in the chorus, let's take a look. No. No, there's no resolution to D there. I, it's just not there. He throws in that little augmented... augmented 9, which is basically the same as a major third. And that, that's your F, okay? And then what about at the end of the uh, chorus? Watch this. No, no, watch this. dominant 7. Is there a resolution to the D? No. He goes back to B flat. Watch this again. Back to B flat. A dominant 7. There's no resolution. You've gone through the whole song, he repeats the verse and chorus, and there's no resolution. And when do you get resolution? Well, look at the end of the song. It kind of goes like this. If you listen to the band, his most recent band, watch this. And then he goes into this ending here, and uh, you get, the guitar player plays this melodic ending. See my keyboard here, watch. Again. Whoops. Well, just one more time. I did, I was sloppy. Only there, only the last note of the song, do you get resolution. Watch C, E, B, and then these notes. Watch these little notes here, this little run. So you stop at the B, the highest note in your run. That's the critical tone, the B. These are ancillary. Bom, bom, bom. And then finally, finally the D, the resolution. And finally the resolution comes at 
theoretically at an interval of a minor third. You say, oh my God, how can this even be? How can this even be? This song, this song is actually not only an example of the concepts that I've been presenting, but it is built, it is written, it is composed of only, only the things that I talked about. There's nothing else in here other than what I have given you in the past, let's say, five or six videos, or maybe, maybe all of my videos, if you include some of my other wacky ideas. But this song is, is composed almost entirely of my, my concepts, my perspective. The circle of fifths, circle of fifths, minor third, aggregating chord, you're aggregating major in this case of your tonal center. And I talk about resolution in my other videos repeatedly. Resolution is key. And here is a song in which if, if he's writing about his, his wife, Linda, at the time, who he loves so much, it's off the charts, off the charts compatibility, uh, the resolution doesn't happen till the very end, till she takes her last breath, last breath and dies, which she actually did. In other words, his love was so tremendous that that he that he couldn't give us resolution in the song. It wouldn't be fitting and proper. It could only come until she passed away. This is a this is a musical masterpiece. This is so so brilliant. I can't even tell you. I just I just get so excited. So. Now, you decide, did I, did I show, did I give proof that my concepts, my, my ideas actually are out there? They're actually out there working. In other words, is the harmonic series in the circle of fifth, is it unconsciously prompting us, prompting writers and composers? Is it, is it giving us a little help? Is it giving us something from nature that we don't even see, that we're not even consciously aware of it? Sometimes I'm not consciously aware of it, and I'm, I'm neurotic. I look for these things. I look for every little thing, every little thing that can be found. In fact, if you think that's crazy, if you think that's crazy, let's look at the song itself. <clears throat> what is the song? Maybe I'm amazed. Okay, you heard it. We talked about it. Paul McCartney, written, released. But the song is more than a song. It's, it's a song about not just the woman he loves, but it's a song about the, the, the music he loves. It's a love song written not just to a woman, to music, to the gods of music, to, to the god of music, whatever. It's a love song written to music. And if you don't believe me, look at his other song, The Long and Winding Road. Paul McCartney, The Long and Winding Road written a year before, or a year before, maybe I'm amazed, all right, and released 1970, um, about a month after, maybe I'm amazed, but written before. And the tonal center, some would say E flat, some would say C minor, but look, once again, once again, Either E flat, C minor, you you choose, you pick. All right, you have your 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 major chord here and your relative minor here. Uh, he does this in Long and Winding Road. Once again, the emphasis on major third, and this this song. Maybe I'm amazed. <clears throat> what is it? It is a symbol. It is a symbol of this this song. This masterpiece is a musical, spiritual, philosophical symbol of the concept of the long and winding road. It is the embodiment. This is the embodiment of this concept. For the love of God, somebody has to think this. It has to be somebody out there who thinks, oh, I get it. I see what he did. The lyrics in, in the long and winding road. And still... They lead me back to the long and winding road. And Paul's saying unconsciously, and still they lead me back to the long and winding road. Winding road. It's a circle for God's sake. 
you left me standing here a long time ago. You left me standing here a long time ago. This is the tonal center, the D. This is you. This is your very self. You're very individual. There's no social life here. There's no relationship. This is you. This is Paul McCartney. Paul McCartney. You left me standing here a long, long time ago. Don't. Don't leave me waiting here. Don't leave me waiting here. Then this song, waiting and waiting and waiting for resolution. He's pleading. Lead me to your door. Lead me to your door. To, to that resolution. That ending which you only get which you get only at the last note. I say my ideas, all the stuff I talk about, I say they're out there, but they're unconscious, and I'll probably go to my grave and not have anybody realize it. And that's kind of sad, but that's the way it goes. You win some, you lose some. But as far as Paul McCartney's concerned, this is truly, if you think and listen, listen to him, it's a masterpiece of music. It's a masterpiece. And it is a conceptual embodiment, a, re a conceptual realization of a concept. As he sat looking at the roads and the hills of Scotland, and he thought about the Beatles and the breakup, all, all, all the different metaphors, the long and winding road, but it was also... The long and winding road of the process of every time a man or woman writes a song, they take the long and winding road. It's just a beautiful thing. Thank you for being incredibly patient, and good night.